been a long day and I haven't been at all well. In addition to being seasick, I have a, uh, a stiff neck. Mm, the gym.
Souvenir shop. How much are the hats actually? Ah, fourteen ninety five. Thank you. Are you from England? Okay, so I can hear you. Learning the okay, yeah. how to juggle. Okay, so let's let's go to the next one. Okay, okay. 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 So let's do it a couple of times. So I'm gonna call one by one. And I'm gonna put the microphone close to you. So. Martini. Oh, Martini. Oh, James Bonner was trying that. James, uh, Sean Bonner. Yeah. <laughs> shaken, not stirred. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Not shaken, not stirred. Yeah. Oh, actually, shaken, not stirred. Do you like shaking it? Uh, mm. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I smell some glue around here. Can you smell glue? Paint. Oh, paint, is it? Paint. Oh, yeah. paint. Yeah. Oh, it must be the ship up there. Yeah. I mean, the boat. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I get, you're right, you're right. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't rust or something, I guess. Pre rust prevention. Hmm. Oh. Is that baby Milo, is it? The, um...
back.
song from the world of musical theatre because if you came to Lions Club you'd know I spent a bit of time at opera but then I also did quite a few musicals and uh, my father took me to audition for my first musical when I was 10 years of age, it was this high, it was for the title role of a show called Oliver, you seen it? And I rocked up there in front of the director and I sang my song, Where is love? And it went very well and the director said to me, that was beautiful. But unfortunately, we can't give you the role of Oliver. I said, well, what is it? What did I do wrong? She said, well, we, we need to cast a boy who looks hungry. <laughs> <coughs> so I've had to accept that there are a lot of roles I never play in musical theatre. And I'll be honest with you, since I was little, I've struggled with this. I've tried every bloody diet there is. I have, and I'm fed up with it. I've tried Weight Watchers. I walked into Weight Watchers, the lady said, Hello. <laughs> We're so glad you've made this decision to change your life. <laughs> Get on the scale, <laughs> and we'll see where you are on our chart. <laughs> so I got on the scales and said, One at a time. <laughs> She said, my, you are large, aren't you? You're not actually on our chart. I said, listen, calm down, lady. I've lost weight. <laughs> she said, well, what's the lightest you've ever been? I said, about 10 pounds, but I don't think I'll get back to that. <laughs> and she just got nasty. She said, well, maybe the problem's not your weight. Maybe it's your height. I said, what's that supposed to mean? She said, well, if you were 12 foot six, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? <laughs> She said, lose weight or you're going to die. I said, rubbish. My grandfather lived till he was 97. She said, well, he must have been thin. I said, no, he minded his own bloody business. And I got out of there. <laughs> I tried that Tony Ferguson. You know where you buy the shakes? You know the shakes? What they don't tell you is when you buy the shakes, you get two free cinnamon donuts. So you're behind the eight ball from the start. <laughs> I tried that light and easy. You know, that light and easy, they come on Monday, they fill up the fridge for seven days. I rang them Tuesday afternoon, nothing left. <laughs> who lives off this? Who, who functions on this? 
I had the spaghetti carbonara like an ice block. It was still frozen. <laughs> and I thought, bugger this. Why should I keep making this effort? I, was, I told you I was a big baby. I was a 10 pound baby. That's a big baby. That would take it best to see you walk first, me or mum. <laughs> She's still got a limp. <laughs> and when I was younger, I won't lie to you, when I was younger, I wasn't this good looking. And I... <laughs> and I had to go out with a lot of girls nobody else would be seen dead with. It didn't bother me. They were lovely girls and they had nice personalities. I invited one home once. I introduced her to my father. She sat on the lounge. I went to make her a cup of tea. My father followed me in the kitchen. He said, crikey, son. Have you had a look at her? I said, what's the matter with her? He said, good. Cross eyes, crooked nose, chipped teeth, warts, boils, pimples, varicose veins, flat feet. She's got a hump on her back. I said, listen, Dad, I don't know why you're whispering. She's deaf. I thought, forget it. Now, before I do this, um, <clears throat> Do you mind if I use this uh, mic stand? Can you see me all right behind this? Because <laughs> I just tend to disappear behind these things. <laughs> now, as I said, uh, this is a song from a musical and uh, it's a role I'll never be able to play. I'll never play the Phantom in the Phantom of the Opera. Can you imagine me swinging from the chandelier? Oh my God. <laughs> but I'm proud to say that for some time in my life I did tour with the great Michael Crawford, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He created this role on the West End and on Broadway, and uh, a lot of people think it's a love song. It's not. It's a song by a very deluded man trying to win a woman over to his way of thinking. A bit like Proposal. And um, <laughs> I'd like to do it for you this evening. It's from the Phantom of the Opera, and it's called The Music of the Night. <laughs> Oh! 
gaffer tape there is down here holding this all in. Does anyone need a doona? You know? Okay. Put this up. You know, ladies and gentlemen, all my life, all my life I've, I've struggled and don't tell me that God doesn't have a sense of humour. Have a look at me. Take it all in. I married a sports teacher. Can you believe it? Spend my life with a woman who loves exercise. And two and a half years ago, she had a child. It's mine. <laughs> and thank God she did, because if it wasn't for pregnancy, we would have had nothing in common. <laughs> but of course, now the baby's growing, she's back on the treadmill, and I'm left fat and alone. And I'll tell you what, I've had enough. And it's the first time ever with the birth of the child that I thought about my own mortality. And that's scary stuff. And I thought, I've got to lose weight. I've got to find an exercise that suits me. So I tried walking. We got any walkers here? Yeah. Yes, I don't recommend it. <laughs> no, because when I got into a real brisk pace, my bum cheeks started giving me a round of applause. I wasn't prepared for that at all. <laughs> Who knew that skin was so supple? <laughs> so I gave up walking. I tried swimming. We got any swimmers here? Yeah. I don't recommend it. <laughs> they kicked me out of the pool because of what I was wearing. Now, I'm sorry. If it's good enough for Tony Abbott, it's good enough for me. <laughs> you can't wear them when I've got them, see them when I've got them on anyway. I said to the woman, what's wrong with these? She said, your budgie looks like it's been through Australian customs. Get out of here. <laughs> so I came back with my boxer shorts and I tried that aqua aerobics with the retired ladies. Now, that's fantastic. At first, I thought I was in a spa bath, but they create their own bubbles, apparently. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It was tough on Cabbage Week, that's all I'm saying. So I'm moving around, I'm having a great time. All of a sudden, I realised I created my own whirlpool. Three of them had gone under. Ow! <laughs> so I'm starting to get desperate. And what finally, someone said to me, what you require is a low impact, low energy sport. Have you tried golf? Now, all I'm saying is, can anything good come to anyone who plays golf? Look at Tiger Woods. <laughs> all I'm saying is, are we so surprised that a kid who's been trained to get something in a hole from the age of five got into this trouble? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> He's got to live up to that corporate sponsorship, you know? He goes to all these functions with all these sexy women here. He hears Nike in his head. Just do it. <laughs> One comes over to talk to him, Gatorade. Have you got it in ya? <laughs> he takes her home, Pringles. One pop, you can't stop. It's very hard. 
So I decided to play golf. I was teeing off in front of two retired ladies. I didn't see her, but I heard her say, Foo! and I fell to the ground. <laughs> Writhing in agony, she comes over. She says, you all right, love? I said, not really. She said, I don't want you to panic. I'm a retired physio. And if you lie back in the grass, I'll have that all fixed in a jiffy. <laughs> She violated me. <laughs> Without my permission, she undid my fly and she massaged the area. After five minutes, she said, do you feel better? I said, yes, I do. But I still think my thumb's broken. Now we play golf on a Tuesday. She's a very nice lady to know, quite frankly. But it's always been a disaster. Like, for example, the honeymoon night was a disaster. It was a disaster. Now, my wife and I were two extremely naive Catholic honeymooners. You catch my drift? And don't listen to any drunk uncles at the reception, because they don't steer you in the right direction. I had a drunk uncle come up to me and say, Listen, I want to tell you something. Just remember tonight that foreplay is very important. I didn't know what he was talking about, so I invited another couple. It didn't go down well. <laughs> so I started getting desperate, you know. I thought, I need some help here. I pulled my father aside and said, listen, you better help me out here. I'm flying blind. He said, son, don't panic. All you've got to remember is, she'll have the what's what. She'll tell you what to do with it. The hell does that mean? <laughs> we arrived at the honeymoon suite. I went in there, she went in there, she went into the bathroom with her vanity case. I got into the sheets in my pajamas. She emerges from the bathroom door. Oh, what a vision. Honestly, she had this negligee on with the ribbons and stuff, you know. She looked like a Christmas hamper. <laughs> I'm not lying, I turned her around, there was a stamp from her father, don't open till Christmas. <laughs> she slipped in the bed next to me, I looked at her, she looked at me, I said to her, love, have you got the what's what? She said, my mother told me that you'd have the what's what. I said, well, it's gotta be here somewhere, get out of the bed and we'll try and find it, you know? We're looking around in drawers and cupboards and everywhere. I couldn't find anything. I thought maybe my father put it in my luggage. I picked up a suitcase, my boxer shorts fell down. She said, what's that? I said, what's what? She said, see, you've had it all the time. <laughs> Suffice to say, it took a lot of years to have a child. Anyway, I thought that I would sing for you tonight the song that I sang for her on our honeymoon night because it summed up exactly how we were feeling. Are you ready, fellas? Two, three, four, one. It's now or never. Come hold me tight. Kiss me, my.
true love, sway with me, and sweet devotion. Your lips excite me. Is that a cold song in the corner there? For who to end up we'll be again. This way. Now you're all out of work. See you Come on. as sexy as I get. Now you mind your own business, turn around, all right? I can't watch while I'm under pressure, all right? Now this one looked like if they dug up Elvis and Pavarotti and mixed them together, are you ready? <laughs> hang on, I've got to sneeze, hang on a minute. Stop it, that's a problem. <laughs> oh, I love your perfume. What do you call it? Midnight in the sewers, beautiful. <laughs> what did you say? Do you know what she just whispered to me? She said, old chickens make great soup. My love won't wait. It's now or never. My love won't wait. Cha, cha, cha. Thank you to the beautiful ladies who played along. Thank you very, very much. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I do love cruising. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the um, the sort of the beachy cruises because I don't like beaches very much. It's not my fault. When I was little, my mother would take me to Cronulla. Do you know Cronulla? Yay! Lovely, lovely affluent outlet there. And uh... <laughs> no, really, you can swim there all day undeterred. And. Uh... <laughs> Now, come on, let's face it, we're just going through the motions, aren't we? And, uh, <laughs> no, it's a beautiful beach. But my mother would lather me from head to toe in suntan cream, and then the wind would blow. And I ended up looking like a bloody cinnamon donut. I still find bits of Cronulla when I shower today, you know? But I do like the New Zealand trip. I've been on that plenty of times. But you've got to be very careful you don't get in trouble with the accent. Because we do have quite a different accent to them. And the obvious example is when they say the number six, it sounds like... Six! That's right. Well, I limped into a convenience shop. I just got off the ship in uh, New Zealand. I limped into a convenience shop and she said, Good enough! What's happened? <laughs> I said, uh, I, I fell on the ship. Oh, really? How did you do that? I said, I, I slipped on a wet deck. <laughs> she said, goodness, how long was it? I said, what? The deck? She said, yes, the deck. I said, it's about a kilometre around the ship. She fainted and I left. Well, cruising is a great way to meet people and you never know. Even though you're here for three days, you might meet some fantastic friends and keep them for life. But you're probably here cruising with someone who's a significant other. Maybe they're not your wife. And um, I want to sing this beautiful song for you by Simon and Garfunkel. 
which is a name you should never say when you're drunk.
All right, I'm in the mood for some rock and roll. How about you? Oh, yes, I'm in the mood for some rock and roll. In 1960, there was an explosion in Britain. An explosion of rock and roll and some of the greatest bands of all time were born. We're going to celebrate some of them now. I want you to stamp your feet, clap your hands, wiggle whatever you got to wiggle, get up, get naked, whatever. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. It's the 60s, all right? You want to burn your bra? No, maybe not fire. All right, maybe not fire. All right, you ready to go, boys? I want two, three, four. Let's see those hands. Come on. Here we go.
and a lie down, how about you? Oh my God. I think my spleen moved during that. Does anyone know what that organ does? No, neither do I. I know what the woofer valve or the puffer valve does, because I busted it years ago. Well, I'm gonna say goodbye now with a song by the king of rock and roll, which of course is... That's right, Rolf Harris. <laughs> Rolf Harris is not the king. Could you imagine the frustration all these years being Rolf Harris's wife, making love to Rolf, looking down at him going, you enjoying this, Rolf? He's looking back at her going, oh, <laughs> trying to play the wobble board behind her head, you know. <coughs> You'd want to hope he wasn't into bondage, it's tough to tie a kangaroo down. Anyway. <laughs> I want to thank some wonderful people who've uh, m always make it such a pleasure to work here in this beautiful marquee theatre. First of all, a big, huge round of applause to a fantastic production team led by the sensational, beautiful Roz and her sidekick, Noelle. Let's hear for Roz and Noelle and Lights and Sound. <laughs> Noelle, a little bit more verb for this last one. I want to thank these fabulous guys behind me. They have been so sensational. I'm going to introduce them one by one. First of all, my wonderful friend, fantastic bass guitarist. Please thank Nikolai on the bass. on the drums, banging away, banging away, then he had to come and do the show. <laughs> Please thank the sensational Matt on the drums. <laughs> and last but never least, our wonderful bandmaster who's just been so fantastic with the two keyboards tonight. Please thank Sean. Thank you, mate. Awesome stuff. 
It's a pleasure to be back on board with a gentleman who I consider one of the finest cruise directors I've ever worked with. This is Sandy Cadwallader. Please thank Sandy. Thanks, mate. Well, a lot of people tell me that I should sing Elvis Presley songs. I ask them why and they say, because you and Elvis like twins. <laughs> I can see it. You get a photo of Elvis about a week before he died, we're identical. <laughs> but we share much more than that. I never realised that we had the same nickname. They used to call him Elvis the Pelvis. They used to call me Enos. <laughs> Congratulations to our winners on the side here, who got 30% more product this evening. Until I see you again on the wonderful seas. <laughs>